Um, everyone's so talented, the, the cast, the crew. Um, oh, weirdly, Michael's calling me right now. I am sorry, Michael. Um, that's ironic. Um, okay, no, Michael is so much fun to hang out with. Um, yeah, so just like hanging out with everybody. Stop calling me, Michael. on Love, Victor, and this is for Young Entertainment Men. Yes, and the hair is on fire. Ignore all of this. <laughs> I just bun it? I mean, no, you can do whatever you want. Worse. All right. That... It's like Elvis. We have an Elvis look going. You know what? I'll take that compliment, I think. <laughs> I think. It's okay. a compliment. Absolutely. Okay, great. What yeah. has been, hands down, your favorite part of being a part of this incredible show, Love, Victor? Oh, it's definitely the people. I love the people. Um, I love the cast, the crew. Everyone is just so much fun to work with. Um, and yeah, every I love going to work every single day and just like uh, being able to create the story with them. So uh, yeah, I just, I, um, uh, it, all those memories with everybody was just the best thing I could have asked for. Yeah, do you have a specific moment, like a cast, your favorite cast moment, whether it was like, on set or off set, something that happened a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I love these people and these will be, you know, my friends for the rest of my life. Oh, there's so many of those moments. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the most recent one was when we finished filming. Um, that one was uh, uh, really just incredible. And I had such a blast and uh, uh, Michael made an amazing speech um, uh, and it was like really heartwarming and sweet and it was like really cool to experience that and, uh, kind of go through that together. Um, but there's been like a ton of moments, like going, going to trips, we went to New York, we did like Big Bear, um, and, uh, uh just like, just hanging out with people, like going just to someone's house and playing Smash with everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like, you know, it's just like every time we hang out, it's like a new memory. Um, uh, going to the beach, beach, beach days are so much fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a ton, but uh, I, I can say every moment if, if, uh, yeah. if but yeah, yeah. Uh, there's that's been a lot. amazing. That's, that's so fun. <laughs> and to hear that you're so close with all the cast, I mean, that's just a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So this is a little bit different of a question. Doesn't, we don't have to relate it back to the cast, but what uh, is one behind the scenes moment that really stands out to you, whether it's something that happened on set, maybe while filming that the audience didn't get to see, uh, whether it's something that's super funny or maybe endearing or just an interesting thing like, yeah, this happened. What's like your biggest behind the scenes fun fact you can give us or moment? Yeah, this happened. Oh man, <clears throat> there's been a lot of those. I mean, from like Michael and I, I think I've talked about this before, but like Michael and I like, uh, um, like foot raced across Paramount like on our first day um, yeah. and I, I lost bad. Uh, I also haven't ran since I was eight, so I was at a disadvantage, but it was, uh, uh, yeah, definitely that or uh, the, uh, they did, they came up with a blooper reel, I think for like season one and I couldn't say simpatico. Yeah, um, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they're like, just keep on cutting back to me, unable to say sp simpatico. Now I say it perfectly fine. It just haunts my dreams. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I wish I could give you something like good, but. Uh, That's okay. If you think about it, bring it back up. All yeah, we, yeah we could, if I think of anything, I'll let you know. No, that's super fun. I can picture y'all racing across Paramount, Paramount now. Yeah. So that's cool. Oh, it's so uh, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. What is since now I know you shoot you shoot at the Paramount backlot, which I guess that makes sense. Um, what is one thing like you have? Do you have your own trailer, your own star wagon? Is there one thing that you have in there that's like your go to thing? Whether it's like a picture of someone that I don't know makes you feel like you're at home, or a, a snack that maybe craft services always has for you. Um, not really. I kind of like. I kind of kept mine just kind of like the way it is. Yeah. I, I, I just like George like decked his out. Okay. And, 
I just like I just kept it and it had like good heating. Like I, I always appreciated that. <laughs> um but like, you know, all I really need was coffee and that was like a walk away. And so uh yeah, I uh um I didn't really do anything with my trailer, mostly because I understood that eventually I would have to like pack it all up and like yeah. bring it down. And I'm too lazy. And so okay, yeah. I decided I'm just not gonna do anything. Yeah. But, that makes yeah. sense. Simple mm -hmm. guy. Absolutely. Had a great swivel chair though. Oh. I, I did appreciate that. Yeah, today not, I have not one mine. and I noticed that I'm in a swivel chair. I'm like, wait, I have to stay still. Mm. I'm normally not in Yeah, the yeah. I used to just spin around in that thing. Oh. Yeah, just in between, in between scenes. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a fun time. Cool. <laughs> I'm um, easily you what? I'm easily amused. Yeah. You'd cut, I bet you'd walk on set all dizzy and they're like, what just happened? What was he doing? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> awesome. So you have some pretty emotional scenes and you are so talented. You're so good at ah, shooting yeah. them. It's ah, true. Thank you. Yeah, so I wanna know what is your process for either crying on cue or getting super emotional on cue? And I also, Coming from the perspective of young actors who I'm sure you inspire millions of them, what is like your biggest piece of advice for someone that needs to get really emotional or cry on cue in the moment? What is your go-to? Uh, well, I mean, I'm always for the idea of kind of being in the moment, you know, uh, like uh, especially when you're doing any scene, uh, what I always do is try to just connect with the other person and like stay in that world. And so um, it kind of just happens a little bit. Like, you know, if you're like truly living in the scene and in the moment, there's times where it doesn't. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of just like to be present. Um, and, and, and advice for getting emotional. Or even- I'm always, I'm always against using, I know a lot of actors do this, but I'm always against using, um, personal experience all the time. And that's just because, I don't know, like that's you, like, I'm sure it works. And, but I just feel like there's like a, there's like a conflicting thing with that, with like, you know, bringing emotions up from your own past uh, to benefit, you know, what you're doing. I understand the need for it. Um, I just don't really recommend it me mental health wise, I think. Um, so if anything, I would say, I mean, try to uh, uh, just feel what the character's feeling with uh, uh, sympathy. And I think it usually, at least for me, it comes. So, yeah, that's uh, a great point to use sympathy as a tool for your character. That's <laughs> great. I've actually never uh, heard it put that way. I do hear a lot of actors. Oh, then it's probably wrong. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> great. I've heard of a lot of, ac most actors share, share the other what you, but I've also heard that's like a conflict with mental health. So um, that's a great way to put it. I love that. That's yeah. Awful. Yeah, just be cool. careful. Yeah. So, okay, diving into the show, what was it like for you when you found out that this will be the final season? Did you know before filming season three that this would be the last one or was it kind of a shocker for everyone while filming? And if it was while filming, did the writers have to go back and do rewrites? What was that process like? Um, <clears throat> I, from what I remember, I think we found out like halfway through um, and we were all brought into a Zoom meeting and they told us, and it was, it was like a, it was a like, ah, man kind mm -hmm. of moment. But um, you know, the fact that we were able to do three seasons Mm -hmm. and like do this whole arc was an incredible accomplishment and such a privilege. And so even though we were sad that it was ending, we were glad that we were like, you know, able to know and, you know, like do things correctly. Um, as of uh, writing, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, that's one of the, you gotta ask one of the writers cause I, I'm not really part of that process. Yeah. If, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a, it was a sad moment for sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's great. Thank you so much for for sharing what that felt like. I'm sure it felt disappointing, but also like you said, 
so grateful for the amazing experience that you've had and three seasons is an incredible accomplishment and to even like yeah. take that with you into your career moving forward is just it's epic yeah uh, yeah so at the end of season two felix leaves lake at the wedding and goes to make out with pilar what's going through felix's mind at that point um lake oh yeah i mean you know that was like a uh, um, a huge decision for Felix, uh, whether to keep the uh, girl he's been like obsessed over for so long, or like go into this new relationship that's uh, like risky. And um, uh, I think at, it, it was like a it was a struggling moment for him for sure. Um, but I think he he kind of went with his heart in a way and uh, realized like you know he needs to be happy too, which I thought was such a good moment for um lake and felix and uh him basically being like listen i gotta i gotta do what i gotta do um there's a way better phrasing of putting that but you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and uh uh yeah i i think uh, he kind of just went with his heart and uh, uh that was pilar so i think he was he was feeling uh the opposite of indecisive i think he was like knowing for the first time really understanding what he what wow. he wanted. That's really cool perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So since season one, the dynamics have changed so much. First, we had the core four, Felix, Lake, Victor, Mia. Then in season two, it was Felix, Lake, Victor, and Benji. Mm -hmm. And now we have everyone all over the place. So, you know, on the back end of things, how has it been on set in terms of who you see when you see them? And then have the dynamics changed at all whether you know in the scenes or in real life because you're not seeing some people as much how does that work yeah uh the dynamics offset never change you know it's yeah. like uh um no it, it that never changes uh you do see people like on set maybe more frequently or less frequently but i mean we all hung off offset as well so it's not like like we weren't seeing each other at all yeah. um yeah, but uh, the dynamic on set, I mean, is more, you know, like on uh, on the characters more than it is on the actors. And so, uh, yeah, offset, nothing really changes. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, to be honest, it, it kind of just felt the same, you know? Like yeah. we were just doing our job and having fun doing it, so. That's cool. It's really cool to hear that y'all are so close because I feel mm. like that's not always the case. So that's just so no. fun and I'm sure that's like what the audience wants to hear too, you know, that you guys are real life BFS. So that's really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a blessing. It's a huge blessing. I mean, um, the fact that I love everybody on that set is uh, an incredible gift. So I'm very thankful for it. Yeah, absolutely. So now that Felix is dating Victor's sister and both Felix and Victor are on their own journeys, what is Felix's relationship like with Victor this season? Since season one, you guys have been our favorite relationship bromance. You guys are total opposite of, you know, toxic masculinity, the care that you guys show for each other and how you embrace each other's strengths and flaws are what every male friendship should be like. Mm -hmm. um, and that scene in season one, when Victor comes out to Felix and how Felix embraces Victor with no questions asked, it's one of the most beautiful scenes on, on TV ever. So it, yeah. It was, yeah, that was really fun. I mean, the relate how do we do this without like like the relate the relationship is basically you know we're we're like just supporting each other you know it's it's kind of like been through the uh through this whole series we've just been like uh um like just there for each other constantly um and i think that if anything that grows um uh within each season and so uh i would say this season is no different yeah, that's amazing. That's cool. That's exciting. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. Yeah, it was so much fun to film. I'm excited for you guys to see it. Yeah, us too. So Felix and his mom, Dawn, have such a special bond. There's not a whole lot of scenes between the two of you, but every time you're together, you play off of each other so well. Mm -hmm. So now that Dawn is back and getting the help that she needs, will there be 
more turmoil within the family or is Dawn on her own path now and Felix can just be like her little boy? What does that dynamic look like? Um, it's a... I'll say it's it's a uh, uh, I'll say it's a uh, it's a little bit of both. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll give that. I'll, okay. Uh, you know, um, yeah, it's a little bit of both. You know that really Don and Felix are basically finding this new relationship in a way. Yeah. Because um, a lot's been going on with her. A lot's been going on with him, and so now that um, uh, the way of things have progressed, they are like trying to figure out like where that fits now. Um, yeah. And so uh, that's kind of where that takes place. I don't want to say too much. For sure. No, that's great. And I think it's just really cool because I feel like a lot of kids or young people, they often have like a similar relationship with their parent where they are so close and they do have to carry the, you know, the, the burden of the parent. So it is really cool to just have a character like yours to be able to watch that in kind of a strange way, like navigate it themselves as as they're mm. watching it, so. Yeah, yeah, thank the writers for that. They did an incredible job. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they really, like that dynamic between Felix and his mom uh, was not only a, a blessing as an actor to play, mm -hmm. but it was just, it was it was so cool to see people's reaction to it. And so I, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I, yeah, thank the writers. They did an incredible job with that. Kind of stuff they beautiful truly yeah yes mm -hmm. so one of our favorite moments in season two was after felix's mom gets taken in for the psych eval and then felix goes to victor's apartment and breaks down on victor's mom's shoulders it felt like mm -hmm. it was a hard scene to shoot but watching it you do it with absolute ease um, and I know I touched Thank on, this, yeah, I know I touched on this a bit earlier as far as what was that like for you and, and, and crying on cue. I know there's so much more than that goes into it than crying on cue, but specifically that emotion in that scene, um, how did you do it? What was like, what was going on in your mind when you were creating that, you know, incredibly realistic moment? I don't really remember, to be honest. I, I, I like, <laughs> I, I, like, I, yeah, I don't really remember. I, I just remember going and doing it. And I remember being, uh, yeah, I, I just kind of remember doing it. And, you know, like, uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, like, yeah, I, I wish I could give you a better answer. I really don't remember. <laughs> I, um, what I will say is I do remember it being a super fun scene. Um, and uh, Michael, Bella, um, uh, and uh, like everyone that was just in that scene was, uh, uh, it was super fun to play with. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just remember it, like, I don't even remember. Yeah, no, I, I just That's remember okay. it being really fun and interesting. I'm sorry, I've tried to give you more. <laughs> I, uh, no. <laughs> that's all that's all good i mean you shoot a million scenes so um it makes sense but if anything it was just beautiful for us to watch um when we spoke with bb and we had an interview with her she mentioned how there was a lot of controversy surrounding who was right in the felix and lake scenario um personally i mean we could say you know we think she did the right thing i think the 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 mom should be the one to take care of her child and not the other way around mm -hmm. however felix's trust in lake was definitely you know severed when lake told her mom and and that's valid we understand mm -hmm. the dynamics of why felix you know does what he does um but mm -hmm. we just think felix and lake are goals so what are your thoughts on <laughs> scenario? um i'm sorry say that last part I said, we just think Felix and Lake are goals. So what yeah. is your take and your input on the whole scenario? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it was written in a way to where no one was really right and no one was really wrong. Um, everyone, it was it was really just perspective, um, yeah. which makes the best stories, you know, when um, you can have those discussions and you can like argue about those things. Um, so I think, to be honest, uh, both parties were in the right and both parties were in the wrong in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, fashion uh when it came to all that stuff um i uh, uh 
yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, Felix had his perspective, Lake had hers, and um, yeah, I, I really, I, I don't think there was like an actual uh, decisive like right and wrong. I think it was more just two people acting out of love for another person, uh, which I thought yeah. was beautiful and super fun to play. And BB played it incredibly. I couldn't ask for a better scene partner. Yeah, that's true. That's such a good um, response because it's very true. Even in life, it's like you have your own perspective and no one can really, they don't know what, you know, is going on in your mind and the mm. unique relationship dynamic that you had with your, you know, with your mom. It's just, it's so personal that mm. I totally see how perspective is, is everything. Yeah. Yeah. The world there is made by gray, you know? So yeah. uh, we kind of, that, that storyline kind of showcased that. So it was really, uh, it was really cool to play, yeah. Yeah, um, awesome. Okay, wait, let's see. Oh, here's our question. Here's our million dollar question. Okay. Can we please talk about the hair? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, was this, uh, was it, I mean, hanging out with you now, I feel like this is your hair. This is who you are. Am I wrong in saying that? Because my question- No, no, is, you're pretty accurate. Uh. Okay. Okay, because my question was originally, is that like a character choice? Is that a description for Felix in the script? Or is that just who you are? Well, no, it, it's definitely a character choice to some degree. I mean, okay. we changed his hair a lot throughout the three seasons. Um, like from season one to season three, we filled around with it. Um, my hair is probably the most rebellious hair you'll ever see. Um, and uh, it's like genuinely, like it, it's really hard to control, um, which continuity is, am I allowed to curse? Go for it. Uh, never mind. It so continuity is hell, <laughs> let's say that. So um, uh, yeah, so I, uh, um, it was definitely, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, my hair, <laughs> I feel like, like my hair's fine sometimes, okay? But I feel like when I go into interviews, or anything where people see me in public or I'm walking on the street. I guess that's like every time. I guess that's like, you know, a lot of moments, but my hair is fine sometimes. And then sometimes it just wants to do <laughs> And at this point, after fighting it for 22 years, I've decided I'll, I, I, I concede, I lose the battle um, and I've lost the war. And uh, um, so yeah, it, it's its own thing. Um, but that's you know, I'll be, I don't know. Yeah, this do is it now. Cool. Do your girl castmates ever like say, can I please braid it? I feel like that's such a girl thing. Yeah, I, get, I do hair. get that a lot. Or yeah. can I cut it or can I shave it? Uh, people walk, I, even when I'm walking on the street, someone's like, can I shave that hair? Uh, so, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> well, that's rough. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, but I, I like, so here's the thing. I like looking like a mad scientist. Okay. I, I do. I, I like the Aztec. Um, uh, I just like, uh, crazy hair. Um, not this crazy, but I, I do like big, crazy kind of, you know, all over the place. And so, uh, there's a certain style I will agree with it where it's contained, but still has that like, um, uh, uh doc to back of the future yeah. kind of, kind of deal. Um, and I don't know why, but I, I enjoy it. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I enjoy the, the craziness of it. Yeah. I like looking like I just went through a wind tunnel. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But. So um, then, you know, if we're being smart business people here, have you ever thought of selling a lock of your hair to a to yeah, a- Yeah, for well, how much would I make? 15 cents? <laughs> <laughs> I think you could sell it I for quite a bit. To them to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that's a new like charity idea. Find a charity you want to raise money for. I, 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 I do not think anyone would want a lock of my hair i i don't unless you know i uh, no, I, I can't see that at all <laughs> <laughs> i mean you never know but hey well that's cool thanks for sharing um no yeah so what are you hoping young people will see in in season three um that maybe they didn't take away from from previous seasons I think the main thing I want people to feel is a sense of closure. 
um, with the last season. I think, uh, you know, there were so many lessons in season one and two that we touched based on. I think season three, I think my main hope is that uh, with the characters and, you know, the journey that we went through, that, you know, they find a sense of closure and um, uh, are just kind of like, you know, like, uh, don't be sad it's gone, be happy that it kind of happened kind of thing. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think if there's anything I want anyone to take away from season three is, um, yeah, just like, you know, uh, I, I hope they find a sense of a, like, you know, uh, I get, yeah, I guess closure is the best word, closure for, you know, characters and, um, you know, this has meant so much to us over the past, like, three years. And so um, looking at, you know, other people and seeing how much it means to them as well is a, is a huge deal. And so I hope they can, like, find that sense of, you know, like, seeing uh, Victor and um, Raheem and uh, Benji, you know, kind of going, uh, or uh, 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 Pilar or, like, everyone just kind of, you know, um, yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know why really? I keep on rambling. But no, yeah. For sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes complete sense because a lot of times you you do watch a show that you love so much and sometimes it doesn't provide that closure and it does make you feel a little bit, you know, uneasy or sad or just disappointed because you feel so close to these characters and to this mm. show. So um, definitely looking forward to that and excited to see that and, and feel that. Um, when... When we spoke to Marcus about the writing, he mentioned mm -hmm. how there are six different stages of coming out um, and season one really showing the first three and then in season two showing the last three. So season one felt like it was all about the internal struggle of coming out to oneself. And then in season two, it was about, it seemed like it was about coming out to your friends and family and dealing kind of with the, the externals that happen. So now that Victor and his family are coming to terms and and working toward, you know, what he shared and, and who he is, what do you think um, we will see as far as the next stage of coming out? Ooh, that's a good question. How do I do this without saying too much? Um, you can think about it. You don't need to feel like, I don't need to feel like you need to say. No, much. no, no, no. I, I think like, you know, the main, uh, yeah, I think it's like just trying to, I'm afraid to spoil anything. I'm super, and I don't know how to say it without spoiling anything. I will say, uh, uh, you know, we, he handling the internal, handling the external, and then uh, uh, dealing with, a after you have that dealing with the, the outside world as a whole, that's what I'll say. Okay. I, that I, make, I know that's so vague, that could mean anything, but uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it there because I, I don't want to- That's fine, that's a perfect. Being like, what'd you say? And I'll be like, ah, I'm sorry. No, it's still a great clip because I feel like that, you know, it's people on the edge of their seats. They're like, I really have to watch. So sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, look at me. I'm, I'm a salesman. That's, that's you, you're I'm marketing. Doing. Yes. I'm marketing. marketing. Yeah. I'm marketing. <laughs> um, I love it. Okay. Um, so I know, I know you can't tell us what oh. happens at the end for Felix, but are you happy with how Felix's story ended? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm very happy. I think it was, um, I think it was a really interesting and cool choice. Okay, love yeah. it. I love it. Can't wait to see it. It's, it's um, fun. Yeah, when we spoke with Phoebe, she said that if there were to be a reboot in 10 or 15 years, that Lake would probably be White House press secretary. So what do you think Felix would be? Oh, social worker. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, definitely social worker. Social worker or like, um, I don't know, like, uh, uh, yeah, I would say social worker or like super villain, one of the two. Okay, you know? I love it. You uh, knew instantly. You're like, I know where Felix is going to be. Yeah, I just, you know, like, like his past plus like everything, like the things he's really good at, 
which is supporting people and helping people out and the want to help to such a degree mixed with um uh yeah mixed with like what he's gone through and how he would you know relate to those kind of situations i think social worker would definitely be right up his alley yeah spot mm -hmm. on love that um okay so this one's all about you so moving into your career you are nominated for a daytime emmy for your character on the bold and the beautiful yeah yeah congratulations that's Thank you. pretty wild what did that feel like uh, uh overwhelming uh no it was it was fun i uh um yeah i i remember being in the offices doing my homework and then all of a sudden i hear my name on the talk and I was like, that's what? And I go over and I'm like, that's my face. And they're like, you're, uh, you have a, a, you're a nominated for a daytime Emmy. And I'm like, oh, that's, it was crazy. It was, it was a crazy time. Um, yeah, and it was like, you know, I did like, went on the red carpet and talked to people. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. I, uh, yeah, it was, it was just such a weird experience. Uh, got to see a lot of dogs. They did a dog bit at the Emmys. Um, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, you know, it was, it was a weird time, uh, especially I wasn't on bold that long at that point. So it was just kind of like a, oh, I was uh, more of shock to be honest. I'm still shocked. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a fun time. I, I greatly appreciate that show. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life as well as love Victor, but uh, yeah, Bold and Beautiful was incredible and some of the most hardworking people I've ever met. So, um, yeah, that whole experience was just uh, um, uh, incredible. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that. Um, and beside, besides Love, Victor, too, you also got to make an appearance on This Is Us, where your Love, Victor co-star, <laughs> Rachel Hilson, plays young Beth. So mm -hmm. you've been really just crushing it in the acting world. So we want to know what you think it, or what you know either way is next for you and your career um or in your acting career or anything else as far as like bb shared you know some stuff about her music career like what are you passionate about right now and what's next for you oh definitely sleep yeah that's probably my number one on priority um and then uh yeah no i i mean you know there's a lot of uh yeah i mean i i love writing so maybe something will come of that that's Who amazing. knows? Um, yeah, so that's, I've been writing a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I just keep on working and keep on being an actor. You know, that's kind of, I've, I've been doing this for a, a minute now. So if I stop now, it'd be pretty, pretty uh, 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 defeating. <laughs> no, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I just kind of want to keep on acting. So uh, hopefully that just keeps on happening. Amazing. That's and I, if you don't mind, I want to get a quick background. Where are you from and how did you get into acting? I uh, am from Los Angeles, born and raised. Um, and I got into acting. I wanted to be an actor since I was five years old. And I, um, uh, yeah. And so basically uh, I started doing like plays and all that jazz. And then um, basically uh, one day I wanted to take classes and my mom found a uh, this newspaper article that was like a competition and whoever won got like six months free of acting classes. And so, first of all, sounds so sketchy. Cause this, by the way, guess where this was? It was a competition in a mall. Um, and so, yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm surprised I got out alive. <laughs> and um, we go and you didn't even have to like act or do anything. You just had to talk to people. Um, and so I went up and I talked to people and uh, they were like, you didn't win, but uh, we really like you. And we have an agency called ABA. If you want to come and audition for us, we might like sign you. And as 11 year old, I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And so um, I go into ABA. I did a, um, the um, monologue from Field of Dreams. Do you know that one? The one that goes uh, right down those bass lines. I did that, uh, which... Um, was a lot of fun and they hired me started doing commercials then i just kind of did it from there and so uh yeah it was it's, it was really so much luck was involved uh to even get into the industry it was it's kind of insane um 
but yeah, that's kind of how I how I got started in it. Amazing. Maybe luck, <laughs> but I also feel like it has to do a lot with your personality. You're very kind and magnetic. And I think that um, that's something huge that, you know, casting directors and, and agents look for. So that's really exciting that you got to get in at such a young age and just learn as, you know, you grow up because it's a tough mm. industry. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really remember what I was like at 11. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> but I, who knows, maybe I was like a Fonzie and I just didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it was a lot of luck, um, definitely. Uh, but thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for all these questions. Bottom, bottom line, we just thank you so much for your time and for being um, such a great and fun person to interview and get to know. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I hope I hope my answers uh, sufficed. I hope everything was they were great. Good. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you later. See you soon. Bye. Bye.